All right, people. I figured I'd go ahead and bring up the uh, good old Beretta M92 FS model here. And uh, I've had this gun for a couple of different years. Let me get a little drink of water right quick. Uh, I'm not sponsoring water or anything. I'm just fucking thirsty. So hold on. Mm. Man. Anyway, okay, so Beretta M92 FS, which is pretty much, now don't let anybody sit around and try to confuse you a lot, because there's not that many fucking differences, people, in this Beretta M92 FS versus the M9, okay, the Beretta M9 is basically the same fucking thing. There's just a few small minor differences, just do your homework on that, because it's not enough to matter. There's not a quality difference. But now most of the M9s, just to go ahead and show you, are made in the USA. These M92s, most of them here, as you see, it's made in, um, well, what the fuck? It's on the other side. Goddamn, people. Right there. Made in Italy. See that? That's what I meant to say. I had it flipped around. Because when I show gun reviews, I like to show the extractor claw side. I don't know, pet peeve, whatever. So anyway, long story short here, because I don't like to make reviews too long. I just like to give you the information that you need at hand to make a decision or something or another. So anyway, and just tell you my views and experiences with the gun. So, it's been a good gun, like I say. I haven't had any problems out of it. I've shot it. Just a little over, probably 200 fucking times. And while I'm at it yakking, I'm going to put a little dip of Grizzly Wintergreen in. You're probably like, what next, man? Fucking water. Now some Grizz. So, anyway. I've shot it a little over 200 times. I've put PMC ammo through it. This Perfecta shit right here through it. I've put Winchester White Box through it. I've put PMC through it. And I've put uh, some kind of cheap-ass Wolf brand type bullshit. I had a little bit of that through it zero failures now I have not ran this gun really dirty yet okay now this gun also came into our US military service and replaced the 1911 sometime around in the mid 80s okay just to give you a little history on this gun and that's when I started calling it the M9 so whatever that ain't no big deal to me some people it is but for people who think an M9 is better than this M92 I think you're personally full of shit. So anyway, but that's views and opinions, just like everybody's got assholes and elbows. So anyway, good guns, zero failures, 200 rounds put through it. I've looked up so many reviews on these guns. Uh, I would have to say the only part that would probably go out in this gun right here while firing at normal circumstances, also, of course, keeping it clean, would be the extractor claw right there. That's the extractor claw that grips the cartridge and helps pull it out when it's being shot. You know, I've done other videos in the past talking about extractor claws on 1911s, but this is the Beretta's extractor claw, which it like pivots, okay, on this little pin here. It pivots on the pin like this, just you know, pivot motion, a mid pivot. See, it's got a spring at the back right here where my pinky's at, and it pivots on that spring back there. You know, it's not like spring steel like on a 1911 internal extractor claw. I could get into a lot of details, people. People, I know a whole lot about guns. You just don't give me credit for it. So anyway, point is, it's chrome lined barrel too, by the way. Okay. I don't know if you can really tell, but it is chrome lined barrel. Okay. So anyway, chrome lined barrel. Made in Italy, M92, 200 rounds or so put through it, zero failures of multiple different types of ammo. Okay. And it got in their military service in the mid 80s. Uh, I do not know why they made this in replacement for the 1911, because I love 1911s. And most of you ought to know that, that's been on this channel. Okay. So, like I say, I might be doing a trade on this, on this gun here pretty soon for something different, I'm not sure. I've had to go through all the guns and figure out which one I might would sacrifice if I wanted to do a trade-in. Because not everybody's got the money just to go up and spend, you know, freaking $800 or something on a new gun without doing some sort of trade. Okay? 
So, I don't know what else much to say about this thing. I just know that you can get roughly around 6,000 rounds, 7,000, maybe 8,000 rounds put through it before the extractor claw, which is right here, once again. And this gun is loaded too, by the way. I've got Winchester white box in it. Okay, so, anyway, what we're going to do is just pull it back. And, you know, I had shot it a couple times, so... It is a little fairly dirty at this point. So anyway, nice gun though, but that extractor claw right there, which like I say, I've done this on previous videos, will probably wear down between 6,000 and 8,000 rounds. You might get lucky and get 10,000. I don't know. It depends on whether or not you decide to use good brass ammo like you see right there, and that right here, or you decide to use you some cheap ass wolf ammo. Which I ain't saying wolf ammo is cheap, I'm just saying it's kind of corrosive. Alright. It is corrosive. I mean, not corrosive, but... <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I have to say it's a little more corrosive. Damn. I'm getting a little tongue twisted today, people, but... Since the cartridge on wolf is freaking steel, when the extractor claw grips over steel, that's still on steel contact. Therefore, it's wearing more than it would be still on... What's this right here? We all know what that is. That's brass. Okay, so, just to give you a little lesson, I like the damn gun, you know, it's double action to single action, which, you can fix that real easy by just pretending that this fucking gun is single action only, that's what I do, I pretend like it's single action only, okay, so that's how I fix that problem, <laughs> you know, that's a damn no brainer, I, I could, man, but so anyway, another long story short, once you do have it cocked back, okay, and you pull the trigger. Now, there's nothing in it, of course, once again, for you safety nerds. There's just a slight bit of travel. See that travel? Just that slight little bit of loose travel before it goes off. And I'm not going to dry fire it. Even people say, hey, it ain't going to hurt to dry fire it. I don't give a shit. I don't dry fire guns. I've also done a video on that. Okay, so I'll load it back up because I'll tell you what, gun ain't no good unless it's got some bullets. I know that's right. So, point is, in closing, this gun is damn, and I got to say, once again, I do not put any video up on this damn, well not video, but uh, I do not put any gun up on this side of mine okay unless it's worth a shit so if you see a gun on this channel it's definitely worth buying and you can get this thing for roughly six hundred dollars prices may vary depending on where you live okay because i've really noticed that depending on where you live prices vary a lot okay but once again another good view of the gun here it's really nice it looks good it's got a really good look, just like a 1911's got. Uh, however, it is totally different than a 1911. Operates totally different. The only other thing I can say about this gun, hope I ain't bored you too much yet, So, because I got some pretty other important stuff to say. It's easy to take apart for field stripping. All right? It's real easy to take apart for field stripping. All you do is you just push, this, push that button in right there, okay? And while you're pushing that in, flip this. Like that. See? Pull it back and you're done. To, you're ready to go. You just take your damn spring out and then your barrel pops out like every other fucking pistol in the damn world. Semi-auto, of course. And I'm not going through all that because everybody should know what I'm talking about. Because only a gun nuts are watching these videos. Well, maybe other people too, but hell. Anyway, point is, good ass gun. But if you have to go beyond the field stripping, okay, if you have to get into the real hardcore guts, trigger mechanism, this and that of this damn gun, it gets very complicated. And I personally, okay, see I let that down? Don't dry fire your guns. Same way, I personally, if you get into the damn guts of this gun, it can be very complicated. And what I mean by guts is like further stripping of the gun other than the field strip. Alright, talking about the whole damn trigger shit taking apart. 
taking firing pins out and all that shit. These guns trying to take this ambidextrous damn decocker off right here. Okay. So <clears throat> it'd be complicated then. But I don't really think you'd have to really do much anything like that on this gun. Okay? The only thing I believe you'd have to do, like I say, after between six to eight thousand rounds, is you just it's real simple to replace the extractor claw, which is what would go out and wear down to a nub after around six to eight thousand rounds. Once again, depending on what type of ammo you put through it. So anyway, once again, great choice. Definitely worth the money, around 600 bucks. Maybe a little bit under, maybe a little bit over. Depends on where you live. Alright? So thanks for watching. And I will definitely see you on that next video, people. Alright? So you stay tuned. Because there will be more reviews to come, more variety to come, and more everything to come. Alright. See you on the next one.